Hi, this is my tiny garden and today I will show you everything that is happening in the garden in July. This is my favorite time because I have so much going on. There's a bunch of treasures to discover but I do also have some things that did not go as planned and I will share with you some kind of devastating news to me but you get over and keep going. So go ahead and stick around if you want to see more of my tiny garden. Hi, if you don't know me, my name is Melba and I love to grow as much as I can in my urban garden and I grow both food and flowers in my tiny backyard. Go to this single garden bit first and i have these petunias these are the super busy my petunias this is a lighter color one and these grew a little smaller than the bigger ones that i usually grow which i'll show you on this side they grow a little bit larger and it's exactly the same one but for some reason one side grew larger than the other one i have the chinese i think this is the rosa bianca actually the eggplant rosa bianca and I don't have any fruit yet. I'm hoping that it's been hot enough that it should be giving fruit, but it hasn't given anything yet. I have been fertilizing, so I don't want to over fertilize. And this is a deal. I'm letting the flower that's up here go ahead and flower for the bees and to get seeds. I have some arugula and I just, it is flowering, but I'm still using it. I give the flowers to my quails and my bunny likes the arugula here's some merlot lettuce and here's some swiss chard these i just moved that's why they look kind of sad i have a white really huge one that comes um, is growing there i took out some of them i had a bunch of them together so hopefully they will survive i put one over here that looks like it's dead because i need to water it I have a fever few in the back and then these are two pepper plants it's like a basil that i absolutely love i bought this plant the other basil purple basil that has a bigger leaf i grew but this one i bought and it is so fragrant and so delicious my bunny really loves it and it doesn't get burned with the sun which is great the other one does get burned so I like it. On our station, it hasn't flowered yet. I think this is the cherry one. And I use this toothbrush to fertilize. It's a battery operated little toothbrush and I use it to fertilize my tomatoes. And it does really help. And this is a Chinese string eggplant. It does have quite a few, I think, that are gonna grow, that are gonna form the vegetable and then another arugula and i have a chart this is the red one it's really beautiful i have a bunch of them together i'm not touching those i'm gonna just let them be and i have these two containers that have the same thing that one and this one have the same thing they have a tomatillo a delicious one that you can eat almost like a fruit and i have some more of this beautiful super basin of petunias my cilantro i let it flower for the bees and now they're making seeds that i will collect but they're both doing really good this super busy my petunia is doing absolutely great it is just beautiful this is probably my favorite one of all the ones i grew so pretty and these tomatillos are also doing a lot better. I have a feeling this case more, a little bit more shade than that side. But all the plants here seem to be doing a lot better. It's much fuller, the tomatillo, than the other side. I don't have any yet, but I do see some that may be forming. So we will see. And then I have a basil here. And a Thai basil down here. So I'm hoping that I will get plenty of fruit because it is giving tons of flowers. Uh, if not, I'm going to just go ahead and pollinate it with a little brush. We will see.
but I love the flowers. It hasn't flowered a ton, but the plant is doing really well. I did put it on this sort of sculpture so that it starts tangling and it looks like it's doing that there on the back if you can see that. This basket, and I'll do a video on what I did because it gets so hot that usually when you have moss type baskets, they don't do very well because they dry out so fast but I found a great way to keep the moisture in and it has worked so well look at that it is really growing yes yeah, so pretty I did film how I did it but never put it out I have some sweet potatoes on it petunias verbena I love this pink verbena I'm gonna show you this in the shade because I think you can see it a little better. I do have some dahlias that I'm growing here this year, but I decided to do the small dahlias because the larger dahlias just did not do well. And I think it's because I have a hydrophobic soil that I'm trying to treat. And because the larger dahlias have a, a deeper root, I don't think the water was seeping all the way down. So I'm being really conscious to try to treat this but I have some ideas of what I'm gonna do to go ahead and combat this hydrophobic soil that I'm gonna be working on next. But I have a couple of dahlias in here that are the small kind, a coneflower, a beautiful Gerber daisy. I fell in love with this at the store. I didn't grow these from seed at all. And I have a Shasta daisy in the back. And I think the contrast looks so pretty. I do have a Cosmo that's white next to them. I found these in the store and fell in love and I thought that would be great for the pollinators. And I am also growing here hollyhocks that I started from seed. They're growing and next year they will bloom. Hopefully beautiful flowers. I have another Gerber daisy right there. And this is an aster that is probably about to bloom. I did put a bunch of different flowers here, like this beautiful, it kind of reminds me of, I think it's the cashmere from Proven Winners. I just love this light pink color and I mixed it with some petunias, pink and white petunias and some of the daisies they haven't opened here. When the sun comes out it will open up but I'll, I'll, you'll see how they look. And you can see back here, let me see if I can get the camera. But it is blooming in the back the beautiful purple spikes so everything in here is doing pretty good this year here's another one of those cashmere looking verbena they're just so beautiful and i love this petunia this pot is doing really well that's the lace flower i think this is a chocolate lace and there's an aster there so these should be flowering pretty soon and then the red rose already flower and it's getting new shoots that you can see i did tie it to the side because i wanted new shoots to start coming on this side If you remember, I had two Vigo beds that are round, and this is the one I added this year. So we can see how that one has done with the soil I used that you saw on that video. I'll link that video also below so you know what soil I use. This is a Patagon pan squash, and I am, I need to harvest. It has like a couple. You can see my hand. They're like as big as my hand. I have a basil down here. I placed it there so that it would be a little bit in the shade. I need one bowl and there's a tile right next to it. So this plant has been getting all of them. I have, I have two on this bed and two on this other bed. And this one also has a fruit back there. So I have to get going to harvest. And as you can tell, there's a lot of flowers. There's another one coming back there. And then I have a pepper. No peppers yet. That petunia I planted, I bought. 
and that one there, the white and pink. This one I grew from seed and it's pretty interesting. It has those little stripes. This is the basil I grew from seed. It's beautiful. But as you can see, the leaves are much larger. It's a little harder to grow. Uh, that doesn't like the sun too much. But this one has survived. I've had a lot that did not make it. I find that this one that has the smaller leaves on them, they are a little hardier. I don't know what the name of that is. I think I bought that. I don't think I grew it from seed. And then I have, this is the orange accordion tomato. My favorite tomato I grow every year. I don't have any fruit on it yet. There are flowers. And this is the giant green tomato. And this has a lot of flowers. And I have other peppers on this side, but no peppers yet on it. But it's starting to form. Like there's one coming right here. There's one coming. I did add a zinnia I bought at the garden center that I really love, that I go to all the time. The color was so pretty. We're doing fabulous this year. It was great that I did four plants instead of two. It has really helped. So I think having the two Vigo beds was a great idea. This pepper, I, I had pinched everything that I thought of. And I don't know if I missed it, but look how tall this thing is. It's so tall. This is Toxiredo pepper. A lot of them. They have quite a few flowers. So hopefully I have one that's forming down here. So you can see it. If you have enjoyed the video so far and have gotten value out of it, please support the channel by giving it a thumbs up. If you have been following, you have seen all the changes we've done to this area, which have been major. So getting rid of the pond and building this whole meditation area was so perfect. It has worked so well to just relax, but also when I work on the plants around here, this is kind of my station. So I'm going to show you everything that I've been able to grow in here. And I am really happy that even though this was a lot of work, it's been absolutely worth it these roses i'll show you what they look like when they were blooming it did fabulous this year even though it was transplanted in the spring it was moved from back there to here and this already bloomed is coming into another flush this is probably a third flush i'm going to be getting i am going to be tying some of these new stems that are or runners whatever you call them i think these are stems and then I have this beautiful hydrangea. Let me go on the other side to show you that. This lace hydrangea is so stunning. It was so hot last week for like a couple weeks, but it's still a stunning, stunning hydrangea. Where I planted this, set it up, and then I did another video planting. So you can see in there everything I grew. A lot of the lettuce bolted with the heat. I just added some chard seedlings that I took from the other Vigo bed and added that in here and hopefully they will survive. We'll see how they do. Next to the pond, I have the hydrangea. This was really strange because it bloomed down here first. I don't know if you can see how the flowers are open here. And then it kept growing, growing and growing. It grew super tall and it just ended up blooming later. Well, I love hydrangeas for privacy. My last video was about creating privacy in a small garden without being so obvious. And these are one of my favorites. I also, I didn't mention on that video, but this bamboo screen, just a little foot extra on the fence with the hydrangea has worked so well. And now it feels so much more cozy for the pond. Look how many blooms it has. And then here I have, this is a white sage and it's doing pretty good. That's a dwarf fig and it's, um, they call it fignominal, fignominal. 
and then I have some fever few this is one that has a round shape I absolutely love it look how cute is that they're like little pom-poms I think I'll be growing a lot more of that oh a bee yes stay here girl and then I have chamomile right next to it that I'm growing uh, this is a ground cherry but these ground cherries are really big let me go on the other side so I don't make a shadow and you can see so the ground cherry is usually really really tiny and you can see can you see how big those are they're really large and I am so excited so I grew this one that's really large incredible I can't wait I have a salad that I make uh, I will link also that video below and that salad is so good but I made it with the small ones so I cannot wait to see these because I'll be able to cut them in half and they'll get that sauce in there and it'll probably taste even better the tomatillos I, I'm growing there they're ones that you can eat like a fruit like you can eat it right off the branch and they say they're super sweet they are really really delicious I am the most excited about these two plants these these are the daisies they are amazing look how cute they're like straw flowers they sound listen they're almost like that paper petal feel to them and sound just like a straw flower but they're tiny next to the coop I have a couple hours just really beautiful I love this black velvet looking petunia but I try Lawrence she has a channel and she teaches how to to use the snapdragons on your paws to put them sideways that so they grow and like spill down well it is doing that and it's working so well I did that on the front and the back here and they're doing so well I really love it I do have a dahlia in this pot but the earwigs are just really going after my plants this year and in here i have i cannot believe how much is grown this is my eden rose that i got just like a month or a month and a half ago not long ago it was a tiny stick and it's a heirloom roses from heirloom roses but it's already has leaves it's doing really well i was concerned because it got so hot but because i have it on part shade I think uh, it's been able to survive that and this is the secret garden I may do a tour of the secret garden another time because they will be too long The other that was dating news to me, I was really sad, is that I lost my rose that was here. It got blight. We again had the really cold weather, but we also had a huge amount of rain, and I think it was too much, especially because it didn't get any sun here until much later than the one on the other side. But it's okay, I made some changes, so I'm gonna show you exactly what I've done. So let's go to the other side. This is my favorite, this is Romantic Mix and this one survived it did really well and it has it i do also have a video of my favorite dahlias and this is on it because it has this purple in the center romantic mix it's just absolutely stunning dahlia uh, cone flower i need to cut those so they start getting new ones these are gorgeous sun patients i fell in love when i saw these they are so pretty they look like a painting and this is another aster and then this is a dahlia i got this year it doesn't have any dahlias right now it has like a purple color to it really pretty soft purple and then this dahlia survived but i have no idea <laughs> what this dahlia is until it flowers And then if you remember on the video that I did this pots, 
they are doing so good these are all shishito peppers so all four of them are doing really good and i have some shishito peppers starting to go ahead and form and i have more here so i think i'm gonna get a lot of them i'm so happy i did four of them i have an station doing good i did plant a petunia in the corner and on this corner i did basil my husband was like i want a lot of basil and this basil you can preserve which is great the purple one doesn't taste good when you dry it so i ended up planting a lot of this but my bunny also loves that purple basil fresh when i give her food my lastella greens but these are full of flowers they're doing so good on the other side of this is my cucumbers and you can tell there's a cucumber coming out here there's one down here and these are they don't need to be pollinated i did not want cucumbers have to be pollinated because i have a hard time with the bees i really don't know if my neighbors spray or do something that is affecting the bees but i'm hearing that a lot of people are having issues with getting bees and butterflies so you let me know if you are i'm so curious to know um, if other people are really having issues on this side of the trellis i have beans these are hyacinth beans and they're starting to grow i had a really hard time growing these i have some that i started indoors um, to supplement because uh the i don't know if the i don't think it was slugs i think maybe earwig and i have more starting to plant on the places that i didn't get enough i have a petunia on this corner and another one of those cinias and then these peppers this is the chardonnay pepper this is a delicious pepper if you have never had this bell pepper i it's probably my favorite pepper and then on this one is the purple beauty i have two of those and this one is starting to i saw the other day yeah you can see in there it's starting to give a bell pepper and i have a sweet potato vine that i fell in love with because look at the beautiful edging of pearl of pink and then i did add a few more cucumbers to be behind the cucumbers that are going up there i think one of them is called jade but take a look on that video i give all the names i have two that they don't need to be pollinated and then i have more merlot lettuce all across and that has done pretty good with the heat because we were getting super super hot and it was the only lettuce that has not bolted really bad so a week ago it got in the upper 90s now it's in the high 70s i think to a low 80 different types of petunia this is a gorgeous petunia i love this one i have one on the other side but on the other side it kept getting eaten and i think it's slugs i did do beer traps for slugs and on the front garden i cannot believe how many i must have like 10 or more humongous slugs and snails and one of those traps and it's the second time i get that many there's that beautiful super busy my petunia and these are edibles if you don't know you can eat i believe you can eat the leaves even make tea from the leaves on the flowers but they're stunning because look how big look at my the size of my hand compared to that if they are so large this pot is doing really good this is a brand new clematis i planted this year and it's just getting settled this year it was a little traumatized because i dug out pansies i had down here when it got really really hot but it's doing now that things are growing in here a little more covering the roots it's doing a lot better and it's all the way up to the top there the clematis i'll show you a video when it bloomed the first flush it's going to be blooming again but i got this trellis this year and it's doing fantastic it was just spilling so i'll show you here and insert a clip where you can see it 
this is a brand new rose I did this year and I was testing it here on semi shade basket I moved this hostas here but they may be getting too much sun but this basket has done fabulous One of the devastating news is stuff that happens. <laughs> I lost most of my dahlias that I left on the ground. We got into the 10 degree weather during, I think it was March. It was pretty late, February, March. And we had it for quite a few days. And I lost a lot of my collection of the dahlias that I left. So lesson learned, I will not be leaving my dahlias on the ground ever again. It's too much of a risk with the weather changing so much. So I'll be digging them out every single one of them but i did have a few survives so i'm gonna go through the dahlia patch and show you exactly what i have growing in there and some of the new ones i got this year just to try them on this side of the bed i have this beautiful aster is starting to bloom and i did go ahead and clip this one so i pinched it and it's growing really nice and wide I really love it. This yarrow is doing so beautifully. It's like a super soft peach pink color. Really nice. I will be growing this one again and it has a lot of blooms to come. It's super happy. I do have <laughs> this potato right here. I have not grown potatoes in two years and I have no idea. I never grew them here. But I have this one and I don't know. I think that one might be also a potato. These are the blue potatoes. They're really small ones. So I'm going to leave it see what it does. And I have a gonfrina here. It's a pink color. Really pretty. It's starting to take off, but I'm afraid it's going to, this is going to take over. So I may clip some of the leaves from this potato and try to give it more sun. And then the Alpen Glow Senia from the Floret Farm. Oh, look how pretty. It is so nice. It has like, let's see if I can have the sun. It's too bright, but... It has like a pink hue in the center and then the peach on the perimeter. I think they're absolutely beautiful. This is the only one I got from her collection for seniors and I really love it. This one is already spent but you can tell how it gets a lot of leaves. So it has a thickness to it as it gets older. Quite a few other ones that are coming so I'm excited to see a bunch of them bloom. I did plant a lot of hollyhocks throughout the property. I have one that's growing there. It won't bloom until next year. And then this is a chocolate lace. It hasn't bloomed yet, but it's doing quite well. And one of the dahlias that I got is the passion fruit. It's a short dahlia, but it's so pretty. The color is really nice. Just this beautiful peach and it blooms so much. It's being overtaken by this. That was not smart of me, but hopefully it'll keep doing okay. I have a couple of hollyhocks. I think these are the champagne ones. They're really pretty because they're like ruffled. I can't wait until those bloom next year. I just planted them this year. And these are preference dahlias. I got these this year from a neighbor that sells dahlia tubers and plants. And I am super excited. I hope they bloom this year. I think we have plenty of time for them to bloom. It is such a pretty one. And this is a pro mix. I still call it pro sunflower, the white one. I have this one here. I have one here that is already blooming and it even has size shoots already in it, which is great. And, and I also have this amaranth. Look how beautiful is that? This is Love Lies. I don't I thought it was red. It looks like it's red on the package, but it's really a pink color, which I'm even happier about, but it's doing so good. It does want some moisture, so I try to keep it water really well. And it's growing plenty because it has plenty of sun here. I have a cafe au lait right next to it, and they're doing really good. They're so pretty. So beautiful. I had to get this one new. I've so at that cafe au lait, I have another one right next to it, right here. And that one is starting to grow. That one survived the cold weather. And this one here is Otto's Thrill. And this is a new one from this year. 
I did get this one at our local market and it is stunning. It has this peach tones. I'm trying to make some shades that so you can see it, but you can see how pretty those colors and it just gets lighter on the perimeter. I really, really love it. I'm super happy with it. I have some more Celosia here that is beginning to bloom and like that other one I pinched it and look it's doing so good really wide and I am growing some zinnias that I started from seeds it's a pink color really stunning flower I will be growing this again next year and it has a lot of little shoots coming on this side I have this new one is stunning I got this one Usually I don't get dark color dahlias, but it had like a pink lighter hue. I don't know if you can see that. Isn't that beautiful? It's really a pretty one. I am so happy that I got it. It's like pinkish when you see it from the back. Another new one for me was the D'Allegra Pink Flame. I got that one at the same local nursery. Look how pretty. It has this pinkish, I know it's eaten by the earwigs, but it's still absolutely beautiful. If you see that, so pretty. The colors are just perfection on it. And it is getting a lot of blooms. And then this smaller dahlia is a Dahlia Pink Flame. And it is stunning. It has a pink hue to it with the beautiful yellow center. And it has the dark leaves, which I just love on dahlias. It makes them stand out even more. The flowers really look so pretty, and I thought it looked beautiful with the other one. The two together, these three look so pretty together. And then I have another sunflower here, the same one. I did have another dahlia that survived back here. I have no idea what it is. Well, no. That one and this one both survived so I'm waiting to see what they are I have some more asters these asters have done so good and I cannot wait until they they bloom and over here there is a Dahlia red yellow eye and it has a little orange flower let me show you like this and it did flower a lot and now it's gonna start flowering again another chocolate lace flower back here and more of the pink zinnias that I put them on the edge and the petunia this is the Amazona coca 2 that I had in the basket this is really pretty it has that yellow green color with the dark purple center I've never seen this until this year the other devastating news is that the sweet peas got stunted because the weather was going up and down it got cold, it got hot, the rain, it just would not decide and some, the most of them got stunted. But I'm letting them grow and I'm going to be able to save the seeds and let me show you which ones I'm growing right now. You can see the beautiful red ones. I really love them. I grow them every year. I have this beautiful peach and I absolutely love these two this is like a pink orangey color one I am so excited to be able to save seeds and then this is a very soft peach that has kind of a texture it has kind of like a, a darker pink to it really pretty so I am trying to save seeds from all of those I'm gonna allow them to I'm gonna allow them to grow so I can save and all I do is just whenever it starts making seed pods I snap that off and I'm gonna let it keep flowering until I'm ready to collect some seeds this has grown like crazy this is from last year it's a perennial and it's about to bloom it has those purple spikes really pretty and it is so happy where it is it has a lot going on I am growing over here the hyacinth beans and they grow the purple pots and the purple flowers and hopefully they will go all the way up and it will look absolutely stunning as a background for all of these dahlias and different flowers. 
I have more to show you with some pots on my entrance to the patio and the secret garden and the entry garden with the arches but I think this video is getting too long so I'm gonna probably do another video if that interests you let me know